Adventures of the Teeny Weenies by W. M. Donahay. The dunce pulls a tooth. I'll just bet you a grape seed I'd have won that hurdle race from the Turk if I hadn't a toothache, said the dunce the day after the field day. Why don't you all have it pulled? asked Gogo. Ah, say, Jiminy f f fish hooks! exclaimed the dunce. That would hurt, and I'd rather have the t t t toothache. The poor dunce was afraid to mention his toothache to the general for fear he would have the doctor pull it out. He suffered for some time, but at last he could stand it no longer, and one day he decided to ask advice. Oh, willikers! Chimney fish hooks! Ouch! He howled as he ran into the sitting room of the shoe house. Now, what's the matter? asked the general. I, 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 I've got the toothache, wailed the dunce, holding his hand over his jaw and dancing about on one foot. Well, find the doctor and get attended to, said the general. The dunce found the doctor, and after he had carefully examined the aching tooth, he told the dunce it would have to be pulled. What? shouted the dunce. Chimney Christmas! I, 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 I'd rather have the t -t -t toothache. All right, just as you like, said the doctor. Can't you put something on it to make it quit aching? asked the dunce. That tooth is in bad condition, said the doctor and the only way to stop it for once and all is to pull it. All right, sir, groaned the dunce. P -p 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 pull it out. The doctor got a tiny pair of forceps and a glass of water. He then had the dunce sit in one of the easy chairs and told him to open his mouth. S -s Say, doc, stuttered the frightened dunce. I -I -I is it gonna hurt my much yes it will hurt a little S -s say doc c -c 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 couldn't i pull it myself hm, i suppose you could answered the doctor you could tie a thread to it with the other end fixed to a stone and then get up on something high and drop the stone that would certainly pull it out that's w w what i'm gonna do and the dunce jumped out of the chair and disappeared through the doorway. The dunce hunted up Gogo and asked that little fellow's advice about pulling the aching tooth. "'There's a fine place over the hill just back of the house,' said the little black teeny-weeny. "'There's a berry basket, and you can done climb up on that, tie on to stone, and out comes that tooth, like a cork out of a bottle.' The two little fellows secured a piece of strong silk thread and followed by a number of the teeny weenies, they hurried to the basket back of the house. The dunce and Gogo chose a peach seed for the weight to tie to the end of the thread, and after boosting it up onto the basket, they climbed up themselves. The thread was fixed tightly to the peach seed, and the other end was tied to the offending tooth. Now, all you got to do is to give that peach seed a kick, and out comes that tooth, said Gogo. Crickets, moaned the dunce. I, I, I got kind of a sick feeling in my stomach. I think I'll wait a while. For full half an hour, the dunce stood trembling on the edge of the basket, while Gogo and the doctor argued with the foolish fellow to kick off the seed and have it all over. While the dunce was talking to the doctor, Gogo suddenly kicked the seed off the basket and the tooth was jerked out of the dunce's mouth before he really knew what happened. Oh, willikers, Jiminy Crickets, hallelujah, shouted the dunce, dancing up and down with joy, when he realized that the tooth was out. It's out, it's out, hallelujah, hallelujah.